One TV special, 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 special report, special report. If ever we still need COS, it will be that contract of services of a doctor that would render duty in accordance with our existing law. Also, our hospital, the aim of PH, need a building facilities and a good laboratory, rooms, and equipment. If we are really sincere to upgrade the quality of services that we are going to give to our people. Bakit sinasabotahe ba ako sa microphone na ito? Ah, kinang lang kunod duha para kinsa may padunggo na to ani nga giduha magini mo. The public appreciated very much to the previous Sangonian, to the previous administration. When you bought a property in Taleron or Kita City for, for the construction, for the site of a new hospital building. You bought it in 2019. Yet, what new Sunday or Appropriation. Wala niya sundi o pundo para mag-construct ng hospital. Na unsa o man ito ng yuta o gula dyan may building. I understand. I don't know if it passed through you or it was just an executive action that the provincial government of Misamis Occidental had tapped the services of an architectural firm amounting to 9 million pesos to prepare the conceptual plan for the hospital. Eh, gumastos na kayo ng 9 million? O di punduhan? No. Di, nag-uol ang kuwa kung gasto tag 9 million, madayon ka ni? So that, in order to put into reality the team Asinso of giving equality hospital services, a quality medical services to our people, to the Misamisno, in this budget that I have that I will submit to you this afternoon, we have included 300 million pesos for the construction of new hospital building in Tala Iran. <laughs> Attorney Sapatos, nagtik note siya, medyo mura siya o asa man ay kuha o kwarta karon nga paaprobahan. So, in addition to that, we need to have laboratory rooms and in order to have the needed laboratory equipment. We have to increase the budget of the MUMI. Because what we promise is quality service, hospital, medical, free to those who cannot afford the indigents and to those people who are in crisis. So if we are going to give it free, therefore we will have to increase our subsidy so that from our original subsidy to the MUMI amounting to 360 million 
134,000, we have increased it to 419 million 498 thousand, thereby increasing the budget of the MOMI to 599 million 498 thousand pesos. We need to consider also COVID-19. While we are now enjoying to the situation that we are now on alert level one, last Friday, we were called in Malacanang Mayor Lemuel Acosta of Rakita and Mayor Hindri Jr. Waminal of Osamis were with me in that Malacanang briefing. Unfortunately, the president nagkapasiti, so it was supposed to be a dinner with the president. So wala na lang may nangaon dito gitik home na lang ang panihapon he appeared to us virtual and what was emphasized the need to continue the COVID-19 care and that is the target of this administration and the first 100 days that we need to have at least 50% of our residents, Filipinos, and in our case, 50% of the Misa Misnon should have at least the first booster dose. While Misa Mis Occidental, we are NASA Obos in the um, vaccination program, we were, I think, if not 77, 82 percent. That this administration, the Asinso, Misamis Occidental Administration, we will have to include it in our focus that in the next 100 days, we should at least give a first booster uh, first booster dose to all our citizens. And this needs also a corresponding budget in order to achieve that goal and in support with the administration of President Bongbong Marcos. We also consider the peace and order situation on the emotional address of Vice Governor Wing, which reminded us of that December 22, 20, uh, 22 incident that shows that our peace and order is not that, I would say, stable, despite of the dismantling of the drug organization way back last 2017 that successful law enforcement in the city of Osamis. Yesterday morning in Tangob City, doon na po usa nga milotaw dead body found in Barangay Pulau, Tangob City. Pulau is part of the urban barangays in Tangob City. So that we need to strengthen a good peace and order program in coordination with the Philippine National Police. So that we envision para ang atong mga kapulisan throughout the province focus o dili na usahay muliko liko pa no. we are intending to give 
allowance to all policemen throughout the province, policemen who are serving the province of Misamis Occidental to give them support monthly allowance, which I also included in our budget. We need to attain also to the clamor of our barangay people, of the rural folks, especially in the first district, for the improvement of their barangay roads, provincial roads, municipal roads, and the multipurpose buildings that they wanted to have. This we also include in this 2022 proposed budget that we will submit to you. And of course, tourism is one of our priority program. And we had discussed already with our municipal and city chief executive that next year, Misamis Occidental should be included, should have a showcase tourism program, a place where tourists would come. So we have to develop our tourist attraction in order to have uh, to be a tourist destination. We are allocating 100 million pesos to help our LGOs develop tourist destinations in addition to our subsidy to the LGUs who are in the front line in giving ayudas to our respective constituents amounting to 200 million pesos. <laughs> of course, I will have to answer your questions on where will you get the funds. Let me give to you the figures. The disapproved budget that we had as submitted by the previous administration is 1,868,638,100 pesos and 167 centavos. In order to achieve that programs that I had mentioned earlier, we need to increase the budget to 2,518,638,100 pesos and 167 pesos with an additional increase of 650 million pesos. I would like, therefore, to thank our key finance officials in the provincial government of Misamis Occidental who helped me in sourcing in these funds. And I would like to mention we have here our dynamic treasurer, Mom Elma Borlat, over there. Can you please stand up, Mom? Ingon sila, Mom, nga karun pa sila kakita ni mo ani mong guapang Pilipiniana. And of course, our accountant, daghan ninyo mingon nga, strict ako no ang atong accountant. She's just doing her duty, I believe. And we have to give her a big hand also as one of the key officers. Ma'am Mayet Acosta, please. And of course, our officer in charge of the budget office. Our budget officer um, just retired before I assume office. So we have here our officer in charge of the budget, Ma'am Sara Gamorot. Ang problema ko no sa una kay ikaw mo dili mo control kay wa na budget. Pero karon Iyon si Ma'am Sara nga, takhan man og budget, napaganin na budget na to sa medicine first and second quarter, niya wa pa ma-deliver. So, and 
We have also our planning, head of the planning, who is helping me revise our AIP. I have to submit to you also our revised AIP because that would be one of the requirements for you to approve the new 2022 um, annual budget. We have here Sir William Balies. Ikaw, Sir Muragipog ka o kanang English. Sir William. Diba? And in this connection, I will present to Vice Governor Wing the proposed budget for 2022 and the AIP a ceremonial awarding so that that will reflect that you really have to act it this week in order to achieve our desire for this six months. Okay. Mom, this is the new AIP. No? The of course I lang o sag tanawa kay ang oban anawa pay perma. But we have to formally submit a, a letter at least tomorrow morning. Did you sign the document? Yeah. And our two billion five hundred eighteen million six hundred eighteen thousand pesos and one hundred sixty seven pesos. Centavos. So that we need to approve this so that the BM will approve this so that we can implement these programs this July to December. Thank you. The other task that we have to do is the 2023 annual budget. We need, um, after this, by next month, it's going to be a budget call. And we will be passing a tedious process, which other LGUs just take it as a compliance. But this administration, our team, should not take it as a compliance, but we have to undergo the process in order to come up with a realistic budget, realistic plan that will put our vision into reality, the five M. So that is why we need to reorganize the Provincial Development Council, the PDC, and in order to revisit our Provincial Development and Physical Framework Plan, which Currently, we have that will still be until 2025. But as I scan it, pero Maybe because you approve it for compliance purposes. So we need to revisit that we put plans and programs that are what are needed by our people so that after that we have to come up with the provincial development plan for our three years term plan term based plan and then the we have to slice the 2023 annual investment program and in this process and in my discussion with our head of the planning department, we really have to involve real people, not just people, not just, not, not just officers who are just conscious as members, 
but not as dedicated as you, as we, in formulating the plan. So that I have arranged and negotiated with the Development Academy of the Philippines before we convened the PDC, we first come up with a workshop from among stakeholders. The same way with what you did last week in coming up with this activity and setting your goal for the next six months of 2022. So that after such, that will be the time that we have to reorganize the PDC, convene the PDC, and then go with the process. But what is important is that we, it needs our active involvement that we have to put in there. We have to participate and put in there what we really feel for the people that triggered us, that motivated us to run. And because of that, we were, we were given this mandate, this trust and confidence from the people. So that, I know this is not yet my time. I'm just your guest. <laughs> I am reminded that I should not deliver a message on the way how I delivered, even in the campaign. So it's going to be kiss, keep it short, stupid. So that let me close that our aspiration in serving our people, in delivering the needed quality service, we can do it together. We did it together in the campaign. And again, people elected us. Given that overwhelming victory. And in that overwhelming victory, we have to reciprocate it. Double our time. Hard work. Dedication. Sincerity. Adhering to our guiding principles of good governance. Pass, pass, ang servicio, pero zero corruption. That is our mantra. And with that, with our unity, together with the support of our dedicated public servants, the officials and employees of the PGM. Oh, there is a big possibility that in the next six months, our people will feel the difference and will be proud of electing us to be their leaders. Thank you and a pleasant good afternoon. Thank you very much, Governor Henry, for your inspiring and reassuring message. You have our support on your vision for this province. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair. Yes, Honorable Katane, you have the floor. I move for the resumption of the rules. Rules is shown. One TV special, 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 special report, special report. report.